President Biden is set to hold a press conference as a Hollywood A-lister joins the calls for him to step aside. And the NBA scores big with a record TV rights deal. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, this is The Morning Rundown. Today is Thursday, July 11th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. President Joe Biden will hold his first solo press conference of the year later today, as calls for him to step aside as the Democratic nominee continue to grow. On Wednesday, it was Hollywood actor and longtime Democratic donor George Clooney calling for Biden to withdraw from the race just weeks after Clooney hosted a fundraiser for Biden's campaign that brought in more than $30 million. In an op-ed piece for The New York Times, Clooney wrote that the Biden he saw at the fundraiser was not the Biden of 2010 or 2020, saying he was the same man we all witnessed at the debate. Clooney going on to say, as Democrats, we collectively hold our breath or turn down the volume whenever we see the president, whom we respect, walk off Air Force One or walk back to a mic to answer an unscripted question. Is it fair to point these things out? It has to be. This is about age, nothing more, but also nothing that can be reversed. We are not going to win in November with this president. Clooney joins a chorus of Democrats who have spoken up for Biden to drop out, including nine House members. And on Wednesday, Peter Welch of Vermont became the first Democratic senator to join the call. Welch writing in an op-ed in The Washington Post that Biden should step down for the good of the country. Democratic senators will meet with senior advisors from the Biden campaign this afternoon as they look to express their concerns further. Then the president's press conference will take place at 5.30 p.m. Eastern as the three-day NATO summit winds down in Washington. The 32 NATO countries are lambasting China as a decisive enabler of Russia's war in Ukraine. They say China's no-limits partnership with Russia is enabling Moscow to wage its war. In recent months, the U.S. and European leaders have accused China of bolstering Russia's defense sector with supplies critical to rebuilding the Russian military. Beijing has denied the accusations. NATO's Secretary General spoke out on the second day of the summit. Uh, China provides uh, dual-use equipment, microelectronics, uh, a lot of other uh, uh, tools uh, which are enabling Russia to build the missiles, to build the bombs, to build the aircraft, to build the weapons they are using to attack um, uh, Ukraine. And the fact that this is now clearly uh, stated, agreed, by all NATO allies is an important message, message, message to, uh, to uh, China. And then, of course, we also then state that it cannot continue like this. The NATO nations also affirm the importance of its Indo-Pacific partners, which are not members of the alliance, with leaders from Japan, South Korea, New Zealand and Australia joining the summit. NATO and the Indo-Pacific partners say they plan to launch four joint projects, including supporting Ukraine, bolstering cooperation on cyber defense, countering disinformation and working on artificial intelligence. China is accusing NATO of overreaching and inciting confrontation in the Indo-Pacific region. The United States is resuming shipping 500-pound bombs to Israel after pausing the shipment of nearly 2,000 of them in mid-May. However, U.S. officials say they'll continue to hold back on a delivery of much larger 2,000-pound bombs over concerns they could be used in densely populated areas of Gaza. The U.S. is specifically concerned the large bombs would be used in Israel's ground invasion of Rafa, where more than a million Palestinians have taken refuge since the war with Hamas began. U.S. officials say the smaller 500-pound bombs had been put together in a shipment with the larger bombs, which is why they were delayed, but have since been separated and can now be sent to Israel. 
Democratic lawmaker Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has introduced articles of impeachment against conservative Supreme Court justices Samuel Alito and Clarence Thomas. The New York Congresswoman is accusing them of what she calls unchecked corruption for refusing to recuse themselves from certain cases and improperly failing to disclose gifts from wealthy donors. However, it's unlikely the justices will actually be impeached. A majority vote of 218 is required for the House to adopt the articles. Currently in the House, Republicans hold 219 seats and Democrats hold 213. The NBA has hit a slam dunk when it comes to TV rights. According to multiple outlets, the league has finalized a record 11-year deal worth $76 billion, bringing NBA games to NBC and Amazon Prime Video. Disney's ESPN and ABC will also continue to carry games, including the NBA Finals. TNT Sports, which has been airing the NBA since the 1980s, will have a five-day window to match one of the deals once the league shares the finished contracts. The agreement, breaking NBA records for both length and value, would take effect for the 2025 to 2026 season. Finally this morning, there's a whole lot of joy over at Pixar Studios today because its latest movie has made box office history. Inside Out 2 is officially Pixar's highest grossing movie of all time. So far, the film about a teenager's emotions has earned $1.25 billion worldwide, passing Incredibles 2, which made $1.24 billion in its run. Inside Out 2 now ranks as the fourth highest grossing animated movie of all time. The top spot currently belongs to Disney's 2019 film Frozen 2, which grossed $1.45 billion globally during its release. These are your top stories for this Thursday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.